Well, Bill, uh, congratulations on being inducted into the California Wrestling Hall of Fame. Thank you. Uh, obviously, you've coached for uh, quite a period of time and had some great success. Uh, what individual had the greatest influence on you in your wrestling career? Well, I think the man that just really got me motivated to, to do this was uh, a coach at uh, Fresno City College. It was junior college in those days, and uh, his name was Hans Wiedenhofer. He was the head football coach, and he got me into wrestling because they started the program when I was a freshman, and it picked up a little bit more as a sophomore than as I moved on to Fresno State, why they didn't have a program there, so I never wrestled again. Oh. So, but Hans was, he was a great guy and a great motivator. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have any idols in the sport as you were uh, going through it? As I was going through it, as I look back at, you know, I think the who I idolize the most are the guys that just a general cross-section of the young men that put their foot on the line, that are loyal and dedicated and work so hard to bring success to, you know, their program. Mm -hmm. When did you get started and how did you get started? In 19, okay. <laughs> I, uh, I kept trying to convince the, uh, the administration of Placer that they needed a wrestling team. And on and on it went. And finally, after me hounding them for so long, they finally caved in and let me start one in 1964. And we only won two or three matches that first year. The next year we were eight and two, and then it started to roll. And we were in the Sierra Foothill League at the time, and we won our first title in 1968. And in the next 15 years, we won 14 titles. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but it, it took a lot of work. It took a lot of convincing, and it was all worth it. It was the best. It's a lot of fun. What do you attribute your success in wrestling to? No. Um, work ethic. Work ethic. You know, uh, the, I, I told the kids that I must work, work as hard as you want to work, and then I'm going to work you harder because nobody, fatigue makes a coward of a brave man. I said, none of us are going to get tired in the third round. Mm -hmm. And so, you were successful at doing that. Yeah. Is there one outstanding situation or one outstanding memory you have that stands above the others? You know, there's a lot of them, and to pinpoint one would be, I'd be remiss, the champions, you never forget them, but the kid that stayed off his back, you know, wrestling, you know, the stud from the other school that didn't get pinned, that gave you that extra edge so your team won that dual match that night you know those kinds of guys those are the backbone those are, you know that that low end kid is just as important as the guy that's getting his hand raised as as a champion i agree with you uh, why did you decide to become a coach you know i admired my coaches i thought they, they you know they i thought they could walk on water and i thought you know that's such a neat profession. I want to be like them. Mm -hmm. So they were kind of like my heroes. Right. So everybody has a hero, and I and I got convinced that when I met Hans, Hans was just that. You know, he was just that type of person that brought out the best in you. He was just that. He was a really a good human being. Did you want to be like him? Did you? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Uh, a lot of times when people finish their coaching career, and you know, we talked about why you decided to get out and mm -hmm. you reflect back mm -hmm. on uh, everything that happened would you change anything would you do anything differently or were you satisfied with, with how things went? you know I was very satisfied with the way things went because when I walked away you know you, you win 267 matches against 59 losses in 25 years you got to be doing something right mm -hmm. and so when I walked away I was I was very happy with what we had accomplished and I thought that, you know, it would carry on. Obviously, it didn't. But, you know, that's just the way it goes, you know. Uh, as I look back, what would I change? And I'm trying to think about, you know, with the success you have, you know, you don't want to change anything if you're being successful. So I think I would probably stay along that same dynamic. Mm -hmm. I don't blame you. Why change it? It's you worth. got it, yeah. <laughs> it's like that football, you know, why'd you throw the pass? You're running off tackling, you're getting eight, ten yards of crack. They don't have an answer. Right, absolutely. You got to dance with the girl that brung you. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, what would you like people to remember about Bill Flake? Oh, I, I, I think that uh, the important thing that I think people remember me for is that um, 
honest to the point of being you're blunt. Mm -hmm. And second, everybody's got a chance. You got to, you know, give me your best. I had a motto. Give me your best today. Come back a better kid tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's all you can ask for. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what aspect of wrestling really contributed the most to your life? Lessons learned and so forth. Lesson learned? You know, first of all, wrestling coaches don't make a lot of money. They make a lot of friends and a few enemies maybe along the way, you know. There's always that rivalry between another school. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing you do make, number one, you make a difference in the lives of the young men that wrestle for you. Mm -hmm. And number two, those two factors together, you and the kids together, you make memories that last a lifetime. Absolutely. I'm sure that's what kept you in it for oh, all yeah. those years. Oh, yeah. Well, once again, it's been a pleasure sitting down and chatting with you. Jeff, I appreciate it. And congratulations once again uh, for being inducted in the California Wrestling Hall of Fame. It's a huge honor for me. I'm humbled. Thank you. Thank you.